And now, once again, Richard Thomas. To face a deadly disease like cancer requires incredible strength and courage. But in our next story, that strength and courage is tested beyond normal human endurance. You see, the woman you're about to meet had to face the threat of cancer three times. Twice in her own life and once in someone else's. And it was the combination and timing of these battles that would help create a miracle. In the fall of 1995, Deborah Cook was on top of the world. She had a successful career as an emergency room nurse in a Falls Church, Virginia hospital. She'd just started a new marriage with a man named David, and her two children, nine-year-old Graham and eight-year-old Edlin, seemed to care for him as much as she did. No, that doesn't go there. Okay. But her comfortable world would soon be shaken by a major health crisis. Ah. Uh, All right. It happened during a routine physical oh. examination. Well, everything seems to be checking out okay. Any special concerns? Well, actually, I've been thinking that, um, that just to be on the safe side, that I should have a mammogram done. I've just had this feeling that, <laughs> that I should have it done. Okay. And he said, well, when patients tell me that they have a feeling about something that I've learned, he says, to always listen. Let's go ahead and order that for you. Thank you. Next thing I know, I've got a telephone call from him saying, oh, my goodness. You have two malignancies in your left breast. Honey, don't worry about anything, okay? David stayed by Deborah's side as she was prepped for a radical mastectomy. Deborah and I had been married about 13, 14 months. I love you, too. As traumatic as it was, I always felt that everything was going to be okay. The five-hour-long operation was a major success, and her chances for a full recovery were excellent. The cancer was found on mammogram at a very early stage. Consequently, I didn't need chemotherapy. I didn't need radiation. I just needed the surgery. And I just considered myself whistling Dixie lucky. But 21 months later, Deborah's luck ran out when she discovered a suspicious lump in her right breast. And I felt it, and I felt it, and I thought, oh, God, it's a lump. So I called my surgeon right away. This is Deborah Cook. I need to make an appointment with Dr. Robert as soon as possible. Both samples came back malignant. And when I got that phone call from him, I, I have to say that I felt worse the second time than I did the first time. Deborah was readmitted to the hospital for a second mastectomy. This time, she would also require chemotherapy. And then, while recuperating at home, her daughter Edlin returned from school complaining of not feeling well. How are you? I'm fine. How was school? Okay, but I, I'm not feeling too good today. She looked terrible. She was very pale, and she was clenching her chest. It might sound weird, but my heart really hurts. Like having heart attacks. Yeah. Why don't you go get me the thermometer? I'll take your temperature. Okay. I got home, and we took Edlin to the emergency room where, coincidentally, Deborah had worked. We've been running some tests on Edlin, and I'm afraid to say this, she has leukemia. I'm very sorry. I just remember looking at David, and he was crushed. He just slumped over and started crying. And he kept saying over and over, it's just not fair. That Friday morning, Edlin went off to school looking like just any normal kid.
Oh, you don't, sweetheart. The emotional conclusion when it's a miracle continues. In the fall of 1995, 41-year-old Deborah Cook was diagnosed with breast cancer. But even after a successful mastectomy and breast reconstruction surgery, the cancer returned to her other breast. Then, while recovering from a second mastectomy, she received the devastating news that her 10-year-old daughter, Evelyn, also had cancer. Now, mother and daughter both face the uncertainty of a deadly disease, but together, they vowed to help each other fight to stay alive. The hardest times for me when Edlin was first diagnosed were the times when I was laying on this cot next to her at three or four o'clock in the morning and it was quiet and dark. My fears would come rise up then. I cried then. I prayed then. And I remember at that point with both her life and my life on the line and not knowing what the future brought, my prayers over and over and over again were to please let us live. The fact that both Deborah and Edlin were going through this at the same time, as horrible as it was, I think gave each of them a measure of comfort. We weren't quite sure who was going to lose their hair first, although Edlin's doctors said that it would probably be Edlin. Well, as it turned out, it was me. So I said to the kids, you know what? We're gonna have a head shaving party. And they looked and said, no king. So we put a plastic raincoat poncho over myself and sat in the middle of the kitchen. Graham and Edlin each had scissors and buzzers and they went at my head and they were told they could do whatever they wanted. The baldness was really kind of neat, I liked it. And I think it was because I took it into my own hands and I made the decision to do it instead of letting the cancer do it to me. Well then, a few weeks later, Edlin started to come out in clumps. So we got the same buzzers back. She sat in the kitchen and this time it was my turn. There's no doubt that the two of us sitting together with no hair I can look at her and see the beauty in her baldness, and she can look at me, think likewise, and say, we're progressing, we're getting there. Deborah's nursing background allowed her to take care of Edlin primarily at home. Edlin, honey, try to get some of that food down so you can take these pills. This was not the shared experience that I think either one of them ever dreamed of, but the fact that they were going through it together gave them an incredible bond. And that bond continued to grow. It meant that love and hope was always there, that when one of them was down, the other could help lift them back up. And slowly, Edlin and her mother began showing signs of improvement. There came a point when the light at the end of the tunnel was not another train. <laughs> and it seemed like it had been that way for an awfully long time. I think it was probably when, when Edlin graduated from the more aggressive treatment into the maintenance therapy. Edlyn is nearing the end of her treatment. She has about 17 weeks of treatment left. She's in that home stretch where the treatment is rather routine. And we have extremely high hopes that uh, this will mean that she will be cured forever. Good morning, how are you? Deborah's visits with her oncologist, Dr. Nicholas Robert, have also become very hopeful and he marvels at the progress she's made given the incredible circumstances. Well, I think anyone that has to fight their own battle for cancer has to be courageous. I think what makes Deborah very special is that not only did she have to do that for herself, but as a parent, she saw her child diagnosed with a cancer that could be fatal. And she had to find energy and courage to not only fight her own battle, but to help her child fight her battle. Today, Deborah continues to help in the fight against cancer in a very personal way. It's been a year now, and I'm now working as the breast cancer patient coordinator at Fairfax Hospital. Yes. As a survivor, I can go in and speak to women who've just had a mastectomy, 
and I can share my experience and they'll look at me in a totally different way than I've ever had any patient look at me before and say, oh, I'm so grateful to have you to talk to because I know you know. I reflect back because it helps me enjoy what I have now. And I look at my diagnosis and I look at, at what's happened to us as a gift. The miracle is that we're alive and that we're here to tell our story and to tell people don't ever, ever give up hope to be strong, that prayers are answered. When we last spoke with them, both Deborah and her daughter were doing fine. Edlin's chemotherapy will end in March 2000, and if all goes well, by 2002, both mother and daughter will be considered cured. We wish them the very best of luck.